Okay. Last week we were discussing LKAS 36. LKAS 36 impairment impairment right so all theoretical stuff I have discussed with you but I need to complete all past papers if you can remember I have listed couple of past papers I hope you have done those past papers at home so today we can check them. Let me write the list of past papers on LKAS 36 impairment. Then you can double check it. 2014, December 2014, question number 2. December 2014, question number 2. Part C. This is first one. Second one. 2006, December 2016. December 2016. Question number. Seven B. Question number seven B. Next question. December 2018, question number 4B. December 2018, question number 4B. These are the past papers on LKAS 36. LKAS 36 impairment. Okay. So uh, before starting these past papers, answering these past papers, I would like to summarize what you have learned on LK36. We eliminated few items, few standards from the scope of LK36. Right? We eliminated. What are those things that we have eliminated? LKAS, LKAS2, LKAS2 inventories. Inventories, if you know, already you know, inventories we need to do as per the inventory. Inventory valuation measurement should be performed based on LKAS2. The stock rule is cost or net realizable value, whichever is lower whichever is lower so we are complying with the uh, prudence concept prudence concept okay so the inventory carrying value need to be measured based on LKS2 therefore we need not to use LKS36 so elimination of the scope of uh, impairment standard LKS36 then contract asset Contract asset SLFRS 15. Already we have uh, uh, discussed revenue standard SLFRS 15. We identify contract asset. If we are if we are going to impair contract asset, we need to use SLFRS 15, not LK 36, right? Then deferred tax asset. Deferred tax asset. LKAS 12. This standard also we completed. Right? LKAS 12. Then employee benefits. Asset arising from employee benefits. Assets arising from employee benefits LKAS 19 right then financial assets
financial assets SLFRS 9 financial assets right today we are going to discuss about financial instruments financial instruments after discussing these uh, past papers on LK 36 I'm going to start financial in instruments there are a couple of standards linked with financial instruments for an instance LK 32 SLFRS 9 and SLFRS 7 basically those are the three standards linked with financial instruments okay however if we need to impair financial assets we need to use that relevant that particular standard not LK 36 right so eliminated from the scope of LK 36 then investment properties investment properties investment property relevant standard is LKAS 40 uh, LKS 40 okay, investment property uh, here uh, better to put measured at fair value uh, because we have two methods already you learned investment property we have two methods cost model and the fair value model so the assets investment properties which valued at fair value uh, we need to do the impairment based on LK 40, not on LK 36. Okay. Then biological assets. Biological assets. LK AS 41. Likewise, we have listed uh, standards which out of the scope of LK AS 36. Other than these items, other than these items, other than these assets need to be impaired. If we are going to test the impairment, we need to use LK36. LK36. Okay. So we learn some definitions. Definitions. We learn some definitions on LK36 for an instance we identified or we define carrying value we define carrying value for an instance carrying value means cost minus accumulated depreciation then we discussed about cash generating unit we discussed about cash generating unit smallest identifiable independent uh, set of assets which can be uh, uh, you know generate cash flows independently so that's the simple meaning of cash generating unit then we discussed about uh, depreciation depreciation fair value impairment impairment loss right so I would like to highlight or summarize the impairment loss what do you mean by impairment loss let me write that here impairment loss right we define here impairment loss impairment losses right okay before giving the equation for the impairment losses this impairment loss performed based on indicators indicators right there are some indicators uh, but before linking with indicators there are some assets which are you know doing impairment testing impairment without having Im uh, indicators without having Im indicators without indicators what are the things that we need to do the impairment test even without having the impairment uh, indicators what are those intangible assets intangible assets with indefinite useful life right second one intangible assets that are not available for use right last one goodwill generated from business combination 
as per SLFRS 3, right? Goodwill generated from business combination. These three items need to be tested for the impairment even without having indicators. On the other hand, indicators. Indicators we can divide into two internal indicators and external indicators. Internal indicators and external indicators. I hope you can remember you understood these indicators. So based on these indicators, we need to do the test. We need to do the test. We'll see the test. So impairment loss. Impairment loss equal impairment loss equal carrying value carrying value of the asset minus carrying value of the asset minus recoverable amount recoverable amount hmm? then recoverable amount you should know what recoverable amount is. What is recoverable amount? Recoverable amount is fair value less cost to sell. Fair value less cost to sell. Value in use. Value in use. Whichever is higher or lower whichever is higher or lower. In this case, remember whichever is higher. Whichever is higher. Okay? We need to select highest value. Okay? For an instance, this one, let's say carrying value 50,000. Carrying value 50,000. Here, recoverable amount. Recoverable amount uh, need to be measured from here sometimes you will be given two figures like this fair value less cost to sell let's say 45,000 here value in use 40,000 okay so in this case you need to select this value 45,000 so recoverable amount 45,000 so impairment loss 5,000 Impairment loss 5,000. In this case, double entry, impairment loss. Impairment loss, debit, 5,000. Relevant asset, asset account credit, 5,000. This is the double entry. Remember, if these assets revalued, then I have explained how you need to do the entries right and after this after this discussion I have explained how to reverse if impairment loss is reversed how we are going to account uh, the impairment reversal right we have discussed through examples I hope you can remember now to now we can discuss three past papers listed we'll look at first one December 2014, question number 2, part C. Okay, look at past paper. That past paper.
okay let me read the question 2014 December question number 2 part C part C pin PLC as a cash generating unit cash generating unit which was revived for impairment at 31st March 2014 the impairment review re, uh, impairment review relieved that the cash generating unit that a value in use of 70 million and fair value less cost to sell 64 million right note down or highlight them important the carrying amount of net asset net asset underlying net asset of cash generating unit immediately prior to the impairment review was as follows you are given goodwill book value of property plant and equipment and net current asset what do you mean by net current asset net current asset means current assets minus current liabilities right net current assets okay 12,000 you know what are the things inside current assets okay inventories debtors right those are the things inside those are the things inside so you need to think you need to think of already we have you know ex discussed the scope of the standard as well scope of the standard as well right so keep that in your mind Okay. But we are doing impairment for cash generating unit. Cash generating unit is independent smallest set of assets which can be generate cash independently from other assets of the business. Right? Okay. There was no other evidence of, of uh, obvious impairment to specific asset except for the obsolete stock amounting to rupees 2 million included in the net current asset. Included in the net current asset. That's important, right? Now you are given here uh, carrying value. Carrying value of the assets. It total you can see. 74,000, right? 74,000. In other words, 74 million. 74 million. Okay? So, 12,000, you can see 12,000 under net current asset. This, this includes that obsolete stocks as well. Right? So, when you uh, do the impairment for the cash generating unit, don't forget to eliminate that obsolete stock. Because we need to follow LKS 2. We need to use LKS 2 for that. Okay. Right. Determine the carrying amount of goodwill relating to the cash generating unit immediately after the impairment review in accordance with LKS 36 impairment of assets. You can earn 5 marks. You can earn 5 marks. Right. Okay. Do it quickly. Do it quickly.
okay answer december 2014 question number 2 first identify the list of assets what are the assets goodwill goodwill property plan and equipment property plan and equipment next one net current asset net current asset okay net current assets carrying value carrying value 16000 goodwill 16000 property plant and equipment 46000 46000 uh, net current asset initially 12,000 right examiner has given this 12,000 included obsolete stock worth uh, 2,000 2,000 right so remove that remove that here then how much 10,000 okay all together all together seventy two thousand initially it was seventy four thousand now these values are in thousands huh? you are given millions I convert them into thousand right that's why I have written sixteen thousand forty six thousand and ten thousand likewise okay now the next column you should write you should write recoverable amount recoverable amount recoverable amount right you are given total recoverable amount That's straightforward straightforwardly you are given recoverable amount as see The impairment review revealed that the cash generating unit had a value in use 70 million and its fair value less cost of sell 64 million. Now you are given two figures. You are given two figures. Uh, fair value less cost to sell 70 million. Value in use. Value value in use value in use 64 million as per the standard as per the standard what you are going to choose what you are going to choose you need to choose highest value you need to choose highest value okay you need to choose highest value so we need to take 70 million. 70 million means 70,000 when it comes to thousands. When it comes to thousand. Okay. Now, okay. In between, we can put here impairment. impairment right but remember we need to limit with recoverable amount is how much 70,000 as for the now we need to give the priority right already you learn first we need to take first we need to take from the goodwill right if in the cash generate if cash generate unit consists goodwill we need to take impairment loss from the goodwill now we can calculate impairment loss how much impairment loss carrying value 72,000 recoverable amount 70,000 now we can see impairment loss is 2,000 impairment loss is 2,000 so the maximum value from goodwill need to be taken 
right? Therefore, first we need to give the priority to goodwill. Goodwill, we should impair 2,000, right? So carrying value after impairment, 14,000. 14,000. Now, our impairment loss is already taken from goodwill. Now, we can uh, write PPE. There is no such P, uh, impairment. For PPE, there is no such impairment. So, recoverable amount also, we can write as 46,000. Net current assets, net current asset, put a dash. Because already we have accounted as per LKAS2, right? So don't write here as impairment. Don't write here as impairment, right? That's wrong. So here, uh, recoverable amount, we can write as 10,000. So you can see here altogether 70,000. So in the, exa in the examination question, the examiner has asked, Determine the carrying value of the goodwill. Determine the carrying value of goodwill relating to cash generating unit immediately after the impairment. Plus, right? So the impair we can write as per LKAS thirty six carrying value of goodwill. immediately after impairment immediately after impairment is rupees rupees 14 million 14 million right 14 million Okay, so we answered for the question. Okay, now you can look at December 2016, question number 7B. December 2016, question number 7B. Look at that question. Okay, shall we read the question? When the fair value less cost to sell, 
is derived from a valuation technique the result would be the same as the value in use calculation right discuss whether you agree with the above statement discuss whether you agree with the above statement now already you can uh, you know decide whether you agree or not okay you know value in use and the fair value less cost to sell we cannot expect the similar figures right we are expecting maybe two different figures on fair value less cost to sell and the value in use value in use in the sense if we use this asset in the business inside the business we can generate cash flows we can generate cash flows so value in use means present value of those cash flows present value of those cash flows right i can remember we have calculated them right in the theoretical explanation i have uh, discussed some sums on value in use so you can refer again and again then you can get the full understanding of that so value in use and the fair value less cost to sell we cannot say those are similar we cannot say so we can write discuss whether you agree with the above statement so you can say agree or disagree ah uh, disagree when the fair value less cost to sell is derived from the valuation technique result would be the same as value in use calculation that is that cannot be happen right the most of the cases cannot be happen okay so you first you can write disagree with the statement i disagree with the statement write down i disagree with the statement i disagree with the statement full stop then we can write value in use and fair value less cost to sell value in use and fair value less cost to sell value in use and fair value less cost to sell are not same are not same are not same are not same value in use calculated on value in use value in use is calculated on value in use is calculated on internal factors internal factors internal factors within bracket within bracket present value of present value of cash flows net cash flows present value of net cash flows generated from the asset close the bracket present value of net cash flows present value of net cash flows generated from the asset close the bracket okay we started the paragraph as value in use is calculated on internal factors we wrote something inside the bracket then whereas 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 fair value less cost to sell 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 is calculated 
is calculated on external factors on external factors within bracket market value within bracket market value within bracket market value okay now look at part subsection B subsection B in the sense uh, part 2 of section B right part 2 already we have discussed part 1 of section B now moving on to the section 2 of part B advice extreme on the accounting entries required to recognize the impairment provision of ALPA CGU on the consolidated financial statement for the year ended 31st March 2016 here you need to look at the paragraph main paragraph main paragraph number 2 main paragraph number 2 the company name is extreme PLC extreme PLC now pay your attention on uh, sub, uh, bullet point number 2 the main body of the question bullet point number 2 right you need to read that particular section subsidiary company Alpa subsidiary company Alpa private limited was considered a separate cash generating unit separate cash generating unit okay because uh, extreme PLC has acquired a company called Alpha that particular company is considered as separate cash generating unit okay separate cash generating unit and carrying value of non-current assets underline carrying value of non-current assets of ALPA as at 31st March 2016 were as follows goodwill brand and property plan and equipment PPE with carrying value of 50 million had a recoverable amount of 20 million you are given specific information the 50 million worth property plan and equipment has a recoverable amount of 20 million from that you can identify the impairment loss of 30 million right 50 is the carrying value 20 is the recoverable amount so you can calculate impairment loss on that particular asset 30 30 million impairment loss okay so we need to consider because we need to give the priority you know. first goodwill then if you are given specific assets to be impaired then we need to take impairment loss from them after that we need to use pro rata basis we need to use pro rata basis all the things that we have discussed uh, in the theoretical uh, in the previous session in the previous session right okay uh, the value in use of alpha was calculated to be 650 650 you are given here value in use value in use in this case you are not given uh, what you call uh, fair value less cost to sell no problem no problem take the given one take the given one so in this case if you are given one item out of two when it comes to you know, recoverable amount calculation recoverable amount calculation uh, since you are given one item use that as the recoverable amount right as the recoverable amount no problem right now uh, you can write carrying values impairment loss and the recoverable amount because we you are given set of assets inside the cash generating unit because we need to look at all three items in the cash generating unit okay we'll discuss the answer now or oh, do you need some time to think 
Okay, I will be giving you know couple of minutes. Quickly, you can write the answer. Those who have not, those who have not completed the answer or not answered for this question. But I strongly believe majority of the people, majority of the students answered this question because uh, I gave the list of past papers the previous session. Right. But those who have not answered, I'll be giving a couple of minutes. Okay, what are the assets given? Goodwill. This is answer. December. December 2016. Question number 7B. Right. Carrying value, impairment, carrying value after impairment or recoverable amount or recoverable amount. Okay. Goodwill, second one, brand, you know brand is an intangible asset and property plan and equipment. Property plan and equipment. Property plan and equipment. Okay. Sorry, I have written under carrying values. You can write somewhere here. Uh, goodwill. Uh, brand. PPE. I will write in shortened form. Goodwill, 100,000. So all values are in 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. Here, Goodwill, 100,000. Brand, 400,000. And property plan and equipment, three hundred and fifty thousand. Altogether, eight hundred and fifty thousand. Eight hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. Now here you can write the total recoverable amount. Total recoverable amount of cash generating unit. How much? Here. We need to take uh, uh, 650 million. 650 million. That means 650,000 since I have written thousands here. Okay? 650. 650. Now you can compare these two carrying value and the recoverable amount. 200,000 is the impairment loss altogether. Impairment loss of cash generating unit is 200,000. Okay. Now you need to take from the assets inside the cash generating unit based on the priority. 
you know the priority list you know the priority list from where that we are going to take first huh? if you are given goodwill you need to take from goodwill right so total impairment loss is 200,000 total impairment loss is 200,000 okay right out of this 200,000 take 100,000 from here because goodwill you have 100,000 we need to impair goodwill full right after impairment no more no goodwill at all put a dash here right now there is a specific impairment right there is a specific impairment there is a specific impairment what is that already we discussed that uh, when we read the question 50 million worth property plan equipment the recoverable amount is 20 million <coughs> that means here from PPE you need to take 30,000 30,000 because 50 million 50 million means this is carrying value recoverable amount uh, recoverable amount how much recoverable amount 20 million so impairment loss 30 million in that case from here you need to take 30 million you need to take 30 million that is specific one but remember other than that particular 50,000 carrying value you need to remove 50 huh? now already we have considered no, 50,000 50,000 carrying value already we have considered okay now now 100,000 gone 30,000 gone how much 130,000 gone 130,000 gone already we have you know used that impairment loss we have removed that impairment loss from the list of assets right now what is the remaining impairment loss Altogether 200,000. Already we have used 100,000 and 300,000. So balance is so altogether 130. I have written here 130. 130. So balance is 70, right? 70,000. So 70,000 need to be uh, used based on pro rata basis. Based on pro rata basis. Now how we are going to calculate the pro rata basis pro rata basis now brand is a intangible asset yes intangible assets also need to be impaired okay uh, the property plan equipment obvious yes but remember from this PPE we have already considered specific impairment 50,000 worth carry value okay 50,000 worth so remove that let me calculate that pro rata brand 400,000 PPE Three hundred thousand PPE three hundred thousand initially it was three hundred and fifty remove this fifty thousand because already we have impaired right already we have impaired so remove so altogether seven hundred thousand is the total carrying value of these two assets because we need to uh, use the pro rata basis on these two assets no? okay so pro rata basis now we need to impair uh, we need to take impairment losses on these two assets brand and property plan and equipment remaining assets remaining value based on pro rata now let me calculate the pro rata basis from brand Total impairment loss, remaining impairment loss is 70,000.
400,000 out of 700,000. 400,000 out of 700,000. 400,000 out of 700,000. So what is the answer here? What is the answer here? That is very easy calculation, huh? easy calculation. 40,000, huh? 40,000. So PPE, 70,000 multiplied by 300,000 over 700,000. Here, 30,000. 30,000. Right? Now, based on the working, based on the working, we can write here brand we need to take, brand we need to take 40,000. Brand we need to take 40,000. Here, already we, you can see here 30,000 already we have written. In addition to this 30,000, this amount also need to be taken into consideration, this 30,000, right? 30. So altogether 60,000. Altogether 60,000. 400,000 minus 40,000, 360,000. 360,000. 350,000 minus 60,000, 290,000. 290,000. 290,000. Then you can see the, you can double check. You can double check here, see? 360 plus 290 it equals with 650,000. Okay? This is the answer for the question number, uh, 2000, December 2016, question number 7, part B. This is the full answer, right? Remember, not difficult, right? Easy, if you know the fundamentals, very very easy try to understand read carefully and try to understand the question right but based on the examiner's report most of the students not not answered well this pro rata basis most of the people have taken on full amount 350 that's wrong we need to remove this 50,000 because already we have considered right those are silly mistakes but even though those are silly mistakes, you are losing your marks. You are losing your marks. Okay? So don't do the silly mistakes. Right? Therefore, my advice is to read the question carefully. Read the question carefully. And when you write, you can highlight or you can underline important parts. Okay? Okay. Let me discuss last question on impairment loss. December 2018, question number four, part B. December 2018, question number 4B. Okay. Read the question.
let me read the question Ashok Private Limited acquired a taxi business on 1st of January 2018 underline that date for rupees 230 million the fair value of the assets and liabilities of the business as at date as at that date were as follows right the fair value was given purchase consideration also given right vehicles intangible asset taxi license trade receivable cash trade payable you can see here 190 the fair value of the net asset of the business 190 fair value of net asset 190 million purchase consideration purchase consideration how much purchase consideration 230 230 million why this company has paid more than the value of more than the fair value of net asset why huh? the fair value of net asset is 190 but company has paid more than that why that means inside this net asset there is intangible one what is that goodwill goodwill unrecorded one unrecorded asset so goodwill goodwill how much 40 million goodwill goodwill 40 million okay we can discuss more about this goodwill calculation and all in the consolidation as per slfrs 3 as per slfrs 3 business combination we can discuss comprehensively on this goodwill calculation Okay, forty million is a good deal, lah. Huh? This company has acquired on first of January two thousand eighteen. Okay, on February two thousand eighteen, another date after one month. On February two thousand eighteen, the taxi business had three of its vehicles stolen. Oh. It's a bad situation. On first of February, two thousand eighteen, something happened. The cost of the total, the total net carrying amount value of these vehicles were thirty million. Vehicle, thirty million worth vehicle destroyed or stolen, right? Stolen. Because specific, ah, uh, specific. However, because of the non-disclosure of certain risk to the insurance company, the business was uninsured. As a result, this event, Ashok Private Limited wishes to recognize a total loss of forty-five million, inclusive of the impairment of fifteen million. due to the permanent decline in income generation of the taxi business right remember total loss of 45 million because of that the 45 million uh loss right as a result event we just to recognize the total loss of what that's accounting one okay inclusive of impairment loss 15 million that's important right total loss now you need to think that 15 million need to be taken some from which asset we need to decide right we'll we'll discuss one by one don't worry uh total loss total loss 45 million but impairment 
15 million right impairment 15 million due to the permanent decline in income generation of the taxi business okay that's on 1st of february 2018 then an, uh, next paragraph 1st of march 2018 1st of march 2018 rival taxi bis company commenced business in the same area another competitor came hmm. competitor came it is anticipated that the business revenue of ashok private limited would reduce by 25% leading to the decline in the present value present value in use that means value in use right the business which is calculated to be 150 million right the value in use 150 million that means entire cash generating unit present uh, the, the the cash generating unit is 150 million okay the recoverable amount recoverable value of taxi license has fallen has also fallen to 25 million as a result of rival taxi operator that means competitor right license taxi license that's an intangible asset taxi license fallen recoverable amount uh, recoverable amount recoverable amount is 25 million recoverable amount is 25 million taxi license uh. okay then also the fair value less cost to sell of total net asset of taxi business has come down 150 million here uh, you are given two figures value in use as well as fair value less cost to sell fair mm. value less cost to sell 155 million right so from here you need to take this figure because highest value need to be need to be selected highest value need to be selected okay now read what you are going to do what you need to do on this question advise asok private limited on how it should be accounted for the above in its financial statements in accordance with sri lanka accounting standards since you are given two dates specific dates like this you need to uh, discuss on about two days on these given two days right right we'll discuss the answer first we need to look at this date first of february 2018 before that write down the carrying values item carrying value impairment then uh, recoverable amount okay or as you can write carrying value after the impairment carrying value after the impairment okay first one goodwill already we have calculated goodwill carrying value 40 million right 40 million all figures are in millions huh we'll write on like this millions okay rupees million goodwill okay then vehicle 120 vehicle 120 intangible asset taxi license <coughs> how much 30 million then trade receivable cash trade payable what is that 
ट्रेड रिसीवेबल कैश ट्रेड पेबल सो आर वी गोइंग टू इम्पेयर दैट बिकॉज दे आर आर स्पेसिफिक स्टैंडर्ड फॉर दैट बट सिंस दो इन साइड द कैश जनरेटिंग यूनिट दो गिवन एज यू नो सेट ऑफ कैश जनरेटिंग यूनिट बट हियर we can write uh, if you need you can write one by one, one by one or else you can write other net asset other current net current asset net current assets here we'll take the figure trade receivable 10 plus trade uh, cash 50 Minus trade payable twenty, right? Trade payable twenty. How much? Sixty minus twenty, forty here, right? Forty. Forty. Okay. So all together, all together, how much? Take the total. Two hundred and thirty. Two hundred and thirty. It should be equals with this one. Okay. This one. Okay. Then Look at this first of April two thousand eighteen. You are given here. Couple of vehicles were stolen. Couple of vehicles were stolen. The carrying value of those vehicles were thirty million, right? Thirty million. So that is straightforward. You are given. So impairment we can take thirty here, thirty from here, thirty from here. Then here ninety million. Okay, because straightforwardly you are given thirty impairment ninety. In addition to that, you are given here the total loss of forty-five million because of that incident, inclusive of fifteen million. that was given in addition to this 30 million right because we need to remove from the asset now this 15 million need to be taken in which asset which asset this 15 million you need to look at this 15 million impairment right not this 45 million 45 million inclusive of this 15 million so this 15 million need to be taken from asset which asset you need to decide already you know the priority so based on the priority you need to take that 15 million from goodwill from goodwill goodwill right 40 minus 15 how much 25 25 okay 25 here intangible as a don't touch Don't touch. Remember, this date is first of first of February two thousand eighteen. Ah, put the date here. First of February two thousand eighteen. Okay. Right. Uh, intangible asset thirty. No impairment. Recoverable amount also thirty. There is no impairment. We are we are not going to do the impairment on these current assets. Forty. So impairment forty five, right? Forty five here. How much? Hundred and eighty five. Hundred and eighty five. Yes, hundred and eighty five. Hundred and eighty five. All together, you can see hundred and eighty five. Okay, now on this date, impairment completed. First of February two thousand eighteen, done. Now what you need to do? 
you need to do the impairment on 1st of March 2018. 1st of March 2018. Item Goodwill Vehicles Intangible Asset other net current asset. Okay. First of February two thousand eighteen carrying value. Carrying value on first of February two thousand eighteen on this date. Here you can put twenty five million, vehicles ninety million. All values are in million. Huh? Intangible asset, 30 million. Uh, other net current asset, 40 million. Altogether, 185. Okay. Then, impairment. 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 Then uh, you can write here, 1st of March 2018, recoverable amount, recoverable amount or carrying value after impairment, after impairment, right, carrying value after impairment, okay. Now already we have jot down the information given in the exam, exam uh, paper. Okay, here already we have decided recoverable amount, value in use 150, fair value less cost to sell 155 million. So we need to take 155 million recoverable amount. Write down here 155 million, 155 million like this. Okay, in that case. Impairment loss, how much? Impairment loss, difference between these two, 30, huh? 30 million, 30 million. Okay. Now this 30 million need to be taken from, you know, based on the priority. First look at any specific assets, any specific assets. Look at any specific asset. Taxi license, taxi license, how much? They mention uh, recoverable amount of the taxi license has also fallen to 25 million as a result of rival taxi operator. Okay, 25 million. Okay. Uh, here 25 million already we have written recoverable amount it was it was 30 million right 30 million now 25 million how much that we need to take from that 5 million need to be impaired right 5 million need to be impaired please keep that in your mind eh? 5 million need to be taken from taxi license, uh, yes, only that one, only that one, yeah, first we'll take the specific, because they specifically mention, no, here you need to take five, five, here, twenty-five, right, twenty-five, okay, now you can see here, the balance, balance is we have another 25 million. Third already uh, altogether 30, five already taken, balance 25. You can see here goodwill is remaining 25. So you can take entire value from goodwill. So after impairment on 31st March 2018, there is no goodwill as such. There is no goodwill as such. Vehicles 90. 
intangible asset 25 uh, other net current asset 40 now double check the total 90 25 and 40 155 right 155 That is the answer for the question number this one 2018 December question number 4 part B that is the answer okay I hope you understood now with that I conclude LKA 36 LK36 done with all past papers, right? All selected past papers. Uh, we can, you know, I have explained all theoretical stuff as well as past papers. Uh, now you can, you know, practice, go through again and again, and uh, you can uh, search other past papers on other professional examinations right other professional examination then you can enhance your thinking enhance your skills enhance your knowledge right so uh, so you know already I have mentioned in the face-to-face uh, -face classes also the most powerful learning is self-study right so you can you can self-study Right, then you can and you can gain much knowledge, skills, and thinking abilities. Uh, so, particularly, you can search other past papers on profi other professional examinations. Right? Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to start financial instruments. Financial instruments. Take a two pa Take two pages in your CR book. Two pages. And the middle of two pages, you can write financial instruments. Financial instruments. You know, this standard is more important. Very, very important standard. Right? Very, very important standard. So, focus on financial instruments. Okay? Take two pages and write down. Okay, you can turn to page number one in your tutorial as well, right? 
the tube. You can see the standard LK32. LK32 financial instruments presentation. That's LK uh, page number one, right? You can turn into that page as well. Right. Right. Are you ready? Shall we start? Okay. First, let me write financial instrument. Financial instrument. In financial instruments, there are a couple of standards. There are a couple of standards. Right? First one, LKAS 32, financial instrument presentation. financial instrument presentation okay then LKA is 39 but remember this particular standard was withdrawn withdrawn in the sense the most of the things most of the things covered new standard covered through new standard that is SLFRS SLFRS 9 because in this standard because before introducing this particular standard we were using LK39 that standard more complex and there are many doubts right therefore uh, IASB 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 issued new standard for financial instrument right IASB issued new standard for financial instrument Okay. Now, as per as per Sri Lankan accounting standards, Sri Lankan accounting standards means the as per the standard book issued, right? They focus only for the hedging accounting. Hedging accounting. Hedging accounting. Focus only for the hedging accounting, but you know. After you know 2020, after 2020, this hedging accounting also explained through this SLFRS 9, SLFRS 9. Right? In future, this LK39 would be completely withdrawn, completely withdrawn. Right? Because when we were in firms, we were using LK39. At that time, there were four categories, in particular in financial asset, right? Four categories. Fina if that is a financial asset, we had four categories. Held to maturity, loans and receivable, available for sale, and other liability, other assets, something like that, right? So there are some features, unique features for each and every categories. Right? So there are some, uh, you know, arguments. There are some arguments, right? Some doubts. That's, that is the reason why IASB has issued new standard. We can say, you know, simplified. Simplified. Right? They solve those doubts. They solve those doubts through SLFRS 9. Okay? Now you can understand why. SLFRS 9 came into flow, right? SLFRS 9. Here, finance. Here, the standard name was standard name was uh, financial instrument recognition and measurement. Recognition and mission. Okay. In this standard, SLFRS 9, financial instrument.
financial instrument okay financial instrument okay what is the next wing huh? next wing slfrs 7 slfrs 7 financial instrument disclosures disclosures financial instrument disclosures okay why separate standard for disclosures for other standards and the same standard we can see the disclosures but financial instruments why separate standard for finance uh, what do you call uh, uh, for disclosures why for by looking at these standards you can see the importance of financial instrument you can see the importance of financial instrument there is a specific standard for the disclosures you know let me explain the his history of these items right history of these standards you know all you know in 2008 somewhere 2008 9 there was a economic economic crisis in the world economic crisis in the world right many financial institutes faced this financial this economic crisis right economic crisis readers readers of financial statements you know were unable to read those financial statements properly right the risk factors credit risk currency currency risk uh, there are many risk involving right but those are not disclosed on the face of financial statements okay as a result IASB should IASB revised the standard there was a standard but it was revised in 2009 somewhere 2009 for the betterment of readers of financial statements right because they realized there was economic crisis and the real maybe this one the less information on the face of financial statement may be a one of reasons right may be a one of reasons so they revised the standard in 2009 by putting many disclosures on financial instruments financial instruments that is that much important that much important okay because readers will take decisions based on the financial statements information because as accountants we have a responsibility to provide financial information to the stakeholders of the business for decision making purpose okay so we need to learn one by one huh? we need to learn one by one. this is purely theoretical theory the disclosures purely theory right slfrs 9 recognition and measurement new classification uh, recognition derecognition recognition derecognition classification of financial assets uh, classification of financial liability right those are the things that we have to learn on slfrs 9 then lk39 we are not going to touch we are not going to touch because instead of 39 ihb has issued slfrs 9 SLFRS means IFRS, right? IFRS. Already, I have explained how these standard names are changed. Okay. Uh, then, LK32, we need to learn. Because in LK32, very, very important. Very, very important. What is the objective of LK32? What is the objective of LK32? Huh? Objective of LK32 is to, you know, in this LK32, they have mentioned the definitions of financial instrument. Definition of financial instrument. Okay? What is financial asset? What is financial liability? What is financial equity? Huh? Then, 
how to measure compound there are sometimes it's difficult to see it's difficult to see whether you know liability or equity sometimes some securities right the standard explain how to how to differentiate equity component and the liability component that's called compounded securities right so we we'll, we can discuss one by one we can discuss one by one uh, so very interesting standard huh? very interesting i'm not going to say this standard is difficult no i'm not going to say like that this standard is simple this set of standards huh? this set of standards 32 slfrs 9 and slfrs 7 i'm not going to say difficult but interesting interesting you need to focus each and every standards each and every standards important okay sometimes uh, yes i know uh, in the first couple of stages you have learned financial instruments right you have basic knowledge on financial instrument but let me explain them uh, now i'm going to focus on lks 32 lks 32 if you uh, now in the balance part balance uh, you have space right balance space in your book you can write somewhere here lk as 32 or else you can uh, you can take a link from here lk 32 lk 32 The important things can be written here. Can be written here. Important things can be written under LK 32. I will be telling one by one. Okay? Don't worry. Now, before uh, explaining the concepts of financial instrument, I would like to give some you know background information. Background information of financial instrument. Right. Financial instruments we can divide into three. We can divide into three. Financial assets, financial liabilities. financial assets financial liabilities and financial equity financial equity okay now what do you mean by financial instrument what do you mean by financial instrument what do you mean by financial instrument so we need to see the definition right before going to the definition you can see the definition all the definitions are listed or printed on your book right but listen carefully now I'm going to explain what financial instrument is okay remember financial instrument means for one entity let's say entity a Entity A, Entity B. Okay, Entity A and Entity B. For one entity, for A entity, let's say this this is an en this is an entity. It for one entity, that's an asset. For one entity, that particular thing is an asset same thing same thing would be liability or equity for another entity right for one item asset for one entity same thing is 
liability or equity for another entity. Try to understand. I'm repeating. Something is asset for one entity. For an instance, a company. The same thing is liability or equity for company B. Company B. This relationship this relationship there is a contractual contractual you know relationship okay this relationship creates financial instrument understood this relationship for one entity asset same thing another entity liability or equity. Let me explain a few examples. Then you will be able to understand clearly. You will be able to understand clearly. Okay? Let's say data debtors debtors for entity A asset, liability, income, expense or capital. What is the element? Debtors for asset uh, company A. Debtors, yeah? Debtors means asset for company A, right? Asset. The same debtors would be creditors for company B. For an instance, creditors for company B. Creditors means? Creditors means? A liability. A liability. See? Creditors means liability. Right? Now you can understand the relationship. For one entity asset, another entity liability. So that's a financial instrument. Financial instrument already we have divided into three, you know, financial asset, financial liability, and financial equity. In this scenario, financial asset, debtors, financial liability, creditors. I hope you understood. Very simple. Very, very simple. Not a difficult task. But only important thing is understand. Right? Understanding the concepts is important. Okay. Second example. Let's say FD. Fixed deposit. Fixed deposit fixed deposit fixed deposit FD suppose company A has invested on FD what is FD what is FD fixed deposit is an asset FD means asset Right? For company A, that is an asset. Now, we need to invest foreign, uh, sorry, uh, fixed deposit in banks. Bank's perspective or bank's point of view, that FD is what? Huh? In this case, bank. FD means what? A liability. A liability. Right? A liability. For entity A, that's an asset. For bank, that's a liability. So financial instrument. Financial instrument. For one entity financial asset, one entity financial liability. Next example. Suppose entity A has issued ordinary shares. Ordinary shares. Company A has issued ordinary shares. Company A has issued ordinary shares. Now, what is ordinary shares? What is the double entry for ordinary shares? In company A, cash debit, equity shares credit, ordinary share credit. That's equity, right? Equity. Okay. Now, if we issue ordinary shares, what will increase? Equity will increase. So, equity will increase. For one entity, that's an equity. For one entity, equity. 
Now, who will purchase ordinary shares? Investors, right? Maybe company B invest. Maybe company B invest on our ordinary shares. So that particular investment for company B could be identified as what? Huh? <coughs> identified as what? An asset. In this side, asset. Okay? For one entity equity, another entity that's an asset. Right? <coughs> Did you understand? Okay. Next example, preferentials. Company A has issued preferentials. Preferentials, you know, simply we can say a liability. But there may be compounding things. Sometimes we have convertible preferentials. Then we need to see the equity component and the liability component. We will be discussing today. Don't worry. But in this moment, we'll take this preferentials as liability. Huh? If comp entity A issue preferentials, liability will increase. <coughs> On the other hand, who will purchase them? Let's say company B purchase them. So. For company B, that's an asset. Investment on preferentials, asset. So here also you can see the uh, relationship between company A and company B. Company A liability, company B asset. Same same instrument, right? Same instrument, company B liability, company A asset. What else? Let's discuss bank loan. Bank loan. Suppose entity A purchased sorry, acquired a bank loan or obtain a bank loan. That's the real word. Obtain a bank loan. So bank loan is what for company A? A liability. Bank loan is a liability for company A. On the other hand, bank loan, if bank is giving bank loans to the customers, that particular amount need to be recognized by the bank as what? Asset. Asset. Right? Understood? Yeah. Now you can see the relationship. You can see the relationship. There are many things in the statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. More than 70%. More than 70% of items covered through these standards. Agree or disagree? For an instance, here, PPE. PPE not covered, right? PPE is not financial instruments. Right? PPE not financial instruments. Because they, in PPE, there is no this relationship. To, no this relationship. Right? No this relationship. So, PPE not a financial instrument. Then, under, then under, after PPE, non-current asset, investment. Investment, yes. Financial instrument financial instrument. Then under current asset, inventories. Inventory is financial instrument? Yes or no? Check whether this relationship is existing. No, right? For inventory is no such relationship. Inventory is not a financial instrument. Right? Prepayments. Prepayments? Financial instrument or not? Prepayment. Is there any contractual relationship, contractual contract in prepayments? No, there is no such contractual uh, relationship. There is, therefore, prepayments could not be identified as financial instrument, right? Other than that, debtors, cash, uh, debtors means receivable, huh? Receivable cash. Right? Financial instruments. Financial instruments. These are financial instruments. Cash, by definition of financial instrument, the standard mention, cash could be identified as financial instrument. Right? By definition. By definition. Cash at cash and cash at bank. On the other hand, equity, 
ordinary share preference share ordinary share preference share financial instruments right non current asset non current liability bank loan bank loan financial instrument yeah other loan other long term loans yes financial instrument current liabilities creditors payables creditors and uh, yeah creditors will take creditors uh, financial instrument right financial liability now you can see you can see how many items which cover based on financial instruments in the financial position statement many uh, many more than let's say we can say more than 60 to 70 percent of items covered through financial instrument financial instrument okay right with that background information now we can see the definitions uh, we can see the definitions of financial asset financial liability financial equity now already you know the examples of financial asset liability and equity right uh, so we'll try to identify the uh, definitions now okay come here main uh, main summary the objective here what is the objective objective of the standard can you please write down objective objective now you can understand what is the objective of the standard objective of the standard is what prescribe principles how to present financial instruments as liabilities or equities right that is the objective of financial this particular standard right objective write down the objective of the standard establish principles establish principles establish principles <coughs> for presenting financial instruments for presenting financial instruments as liabilities or equity as liabilities or equities as liabilities or equities and liabilities or equities and for offsetting for offsetting financial assets for offsetting financial assets and financial liabilities financial liabilities this is objective this is the objective of lka 32 now what we need to do is we need to do eliminate irrelevant things from the scope eliminate irrelevant things from the scope LKAS 32 we have written the objective 
in this box. Then eliminate the irrelevant things. Eliminate the irrelevant things. That is the scope. Scope of the standard. Scope of the standard, right? We'll just list down the scope of the standard. So other than these items, now I'm going to list down the irrelevant things from the scope. Then you can understand, other than these listed items, we need to use financial instrument standard LK32. Okay? So what are the things that we need to eliminate? Huh? What are the things that we need to eliminate? Sometimes we can see the relationship, right? I already told you the contractual relationship, contractual relationship between two parties, company A and company B. Right? Now there are many instances where this contractual relationship is existing. Right? So we need to we need to see carefully what are the places contractual relationships are available. Huh? Subsidiaries. Subsidiaries. Joint ventures. Associates. Associates. Let me explain because after this discussion, after completing financial instruments, I will be taking you through on consolidation. Consolidation. Let's say, uh, let's say, earlier acquired, let's say Odell, earlier company acquired Odell, 60%. 60% of equity shares of Odell acquired by Aralia. So, this Odell could be identified as a subsidiary company. Right? Let's say 45% or 40% acquired of Odell. We cannot control. Aralia cannot control Odell. But joint control. We can jointly control. So, joint control joint control or joint uh, ventures or joint uh, operations let's say joint operations joint operations right relevant standard is SLFRS 11 here SLFRS 10 let's say 25% or 20% acquired of Odell Odell can we acquire can we control by 25, no, difficult, right? Difficult, but we earlier can give significant influence, significant influence. Here also significant influence, right? Then this is called associate, associate. What is the standard for associate? LKAS 28, LKAS 28 associate. Right, LK28 associate. Okay, now with now Aralia and Odell, two entities, relationship. Relationship, right? But this relationship need to be eliminated from the scope of financial instrument. Subsidiaries, joint ventures, associates. We can write SLFRS 10, SLFRS 11. LKAS 28, uh, LKAS 27, LKAS 27, because in this case, in this case, separate financial statements also need to be prepared. Separate financial statements. Separate financial statements. We need to eliminate this one. This relationship needs to be eliminated. Okay. I hope you understood. What is the next one? What is the next one? Employee rights and obligation. Employee rights and employee and employer. There is a relationship. Right? 
So when we work somewhere, we are signing an agreement with employer and employee. So employer should pay some amounts, right? On that case, on the other hand, employee also some obligation towards employer, right? Employer also has some obligation towards employee relationship, but there is a specific standard. LKA is 19. LK 19. We will be discussing in future. LK 19. Very interesting standard. Right? Very interesting, very logical. Uh, employee rights and obligations. Because there's there's also, you know, relationship. Eliminate. Okay? Now you can you can think uh, what are the things that uh, creates relationships? Insurance contract. Right? Insurance contract, there is a relationship. Insurer and insuree. Right? Through an agreement. But there is a specific standard. Insurance. SLFRS 4. SLFRS 4, right? SLFRS 4. Insurance contracts. Another one, another one, you know, sometimes you might hear this uh, example. Some organizations. Some organizations, uh, let's say Aralia, Aralia PLC, that's our hypothetical business, no? That's our hypothetical business. In the very beginning, we started a business. Aralia, you are the accountant of this Aralia, right? Okay. Now, uh, in that case, let's say there are workers. Workers. Generally, Aralia should pay money, cash to workers as a return. But so sometimes there is a relationship between worker, workers and Aralia. Instead of paying cash, instead of paying cash, what Aralia can do is Aralia can issue shares to workers. Shares. Instead of cash, Aralia can pay shares for the as a return of you know the now workers worked, provided services, right? As a return, Aralia can issue share. So that is called share-based payment. Share-based payment. Share-based payment. SLFRS 2. SLFRS 2. Relationship, right? Aralia and the outside worker relationship. So in this relationship, contractual relationship does not cover LK32. Share based payment. SLFRS 2. SLFRS 2. This standard also will be discussed in future. Very interesting standard. Right? SLFRS 2. Okay? Now you can uh, other than other than these four items, all relationships need to be covered through LK thirty two, right? Then definition. Definitions. Financial financial instrument. We'll write financial instrument. First one, financial instrument. Can you please write down financial instrument definition? Look at the page, page number one. Page number one. I think I uh, recommend you to write here because that's important. We'll write in the summary financial instrument, financial asset, and financial liability and financial equity. 
will write by words. Okay? Because that's important. He, from this standard, you need to identify clearly those definitions uh, and the differences between financial asset, financial liability, and financial equity. That's important, essential. Then only we can learn SLFRS 9 perfectly. Because there are relationships. Right? We'll write financial instrument. Financial instrument is any contract. Financial instrument is any contract. Any contract that gives that gives that gives rise to financial asset that gives rise to financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or equity financial liability or equity instrument of another entity another entity see a entity b entity another entity i hope some you can you know take down this one write down this uh, summary as well then you can understand right now i i know you are referring to the books as well textbook Highlight. Take your highlighter and highlight. Page number one, first bullet point under definition. Highlight. In addition to that, you have written here. You have written here. Okay. Next one, financial asset. Second one, financial asset. Financial asset. That's important, right? Financial asset. Financial is asset is any asset that is any asset that is cash see i already told you by definition they mention they include cash or an equity instrument of another entity equity instrument equity instrument of another entity What do you mean by this? Equity instrument of another entity means what? If another entity, if this company, entity B, issued either e ordinary shares or preference shares, ordinary shares or preference shares, we are going to purchase entity A. Right? That's an asset for company A. We invested on equity, equity shares, equity instruments. Okay, equity instruments, ordinary shares. Equity instruments means ordinary shares. Equity instruments, ordinary shares. Because we can divide, you know, equity instruments and debt instruments. No? Equity instruments and debt instruments. So equity means ordinary shares. If entity B issue ordinary shares, company A can invest. So that's an asset, financial asset. Oh, contractual right that is to receive cash or another financial asset. Ah, see, contractual right to receive cash or cash or another financial asset. Cash or another financial asset from another company another entity another entity okay oh last one so in this definition everything need to be covered everything need to be covered now already we have eliminated right we have identified the real scope then we are talking about the 
definition of financial asset right last one last in the sense last item in the financial asset is to exchange final as financial asset to exchange financial assets to exchange financial asset or financial liabilities or financial liabilities right in this case we we have to have favorable things right favorable result right when we exchanging things financial asset and financial liabilities if we are getting favorable things then that also could be identified as financial asset on the other hand unfavorable things could be identified as financial liability we will be writing it on the financial liability after discussing this okay uh, we'll complete the definition exchange financial asset or financial liability with another entity with another entity with another entity under conditions that under conditions that important important conditions that are potentially favorable to the entity that are potentially favorable to the entity potentially favorable to the entity potentially favorable to the entity okay so this is the definition of financial asset this is the definition of financial asset okay no need to memorize this no need to memorize but try to understand the things inside cash equity instrument of another entity contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity and by exchanging financial asset and financial liabilities with another entity there is a potential potential favorable thing right potential favorable to the entity if when we exchange financial asset and financial liability with another entity if we are receiving favorable thing to the business or entity that could be identified as financial asset okay that is the definition of financial asset highlight that one also need to be highlighted highlight it page number 1 okay then financial liability financial liability third one financial liability quickly financial liability third one financial liability opposite right opposite of financial asset financial liability is any liability that is a contractual obligation contractual obligation contractual obligation to deliver cash to deliver cash we have a we have obligation we have an obligation to deliver cash or any other financial asset when we settle it we need to settle through cash or any other financial asset right cash or any other financial asset any other financial asset to another entity to another entity or or exchange financial assets or financial liabilities exchange financial assets or financial liabilities with another entity another entity under conditions that under conditions that under conditions that are potentially unfavorable
unfavorable to the entity, potentially unfavorable to the entity, right? Now this definition is easier than financial asset. Financial asset we have listed four items, but here two, right? Cash or any other financial assets. Because we need to deliver, in, when we settle obligation, we need to deliver cash or any other financial assets or else uh, when we exchange final financial asset or financial liability with another entity, if there is unfavorable thing, in, if there is unfavorable thing to the entity, that also could be identified as financial as financial liability, financial liability. Right. Last one, financial equity, financial equity. As per the conceptual framework, as per the conceptual framework, we were discussing, we were defining elements of financial statements, right? We were defining elements of financial statements okay how equity is defined how equity is defined in as per the conceptual framework not as per the LK 32 but first try to understand what equity is what equity is right equity is you know residual balance equity is a residual balance residual balance of assets after deducting its all liabilities that is the meaning of equity as per the conceptual framework for financial reporting. Now more or less similar definition could be seen here. As for LK32, financial equity also defined on that way. Right? Financial equity also defined on that way. Look at the definition on the page number two. An equity instrument. Write down equity instrument. equity instrument Fourth one. Right. Write down the definition. Equity instrument is any contract that evidences any contract that evidences that evidences a residual interest in the assets. in the assets. Residual interest in the assets. Residual interest in the assets. After deducting all of its liabilities. After deducting its all liabilities. Okay, that's called equity instrument. That's called equity instrument. For an instance, for an instance, ordinary shares, ordinary shares, right? If early entity issue ordinary share, that could be identified as equity instrument. Okay, equity instrument. Okay, uh, there are some couple of definitions in the book. You can focus. You can read them. Fair value or multiple times we have discussed right fair value okay putable instruments read it's not important as such but in the standard they mention right okay uh, in the page number two you can see some space given 
So in that particular space, space you can write down the definition. Uh, sorry, examples of financial instruments. Examples of financial instruments, right? Examples of financial instrument. Okay. Next, we'll discuss. As per the definitions, as per the definitions, as per the definitions, we need to list down examples, examples for items, examples for items, we'll take red pen examples for uh, items which under definitions you can write uh, under definitions now we have listed four the same place by red pen in red pen you can write examples of items which cannot be identified identified as financial instruments first one we'll write somewhere here first one You can write here, right? You can write somewhere here since, uh, you know, sometimes this, if I write in the below or bottom of the board, some people cannot see. Therefore, instead of writing somewhere here, I would write here. Top. First one. Already we discussed in the background, background discussion, already I have mentioned that. We cannot take physical assets. Physical assets. Physical assets cannot be identified as financial instruments, right? For an instance, inventories and PPE. Second one, prepaid expenses. Already I discussed, huh? prepaid expense. Third one, third one, Liabilities or assets, liabilities or assets, liabilities or assets that are not contractual in nature, that are not contractual in nature. For an instance, if there is no such relationship, there is no such contractual you know, rights and obligation in two parties, even though those assets or liability, we cannot identify them as financial instrument. Financial instrument. Okay? Okay, this understanding is important, right? This understanding is important. Okay, now uh, I have discussed definitions of financial instruments financial asset, financial liability, financial equity, and we discuss what are the things that we cannot identify as financial instruments. Okay. Uh, okay, now we'll take a small break. Uh, after break, you can join the balance part of LK32. After this, I will, I will be starting, I will be discussing SLFRS 9. SLFRS 9. Okay. Okay, we'll take a break now.